Hey guys, what's going on? This is Cheney 180 and the Fallen Fed. Hey guys, what's up? And your friendly neighborhood playing with myself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jerry Mercaluso. And you're listening to another episode of They're Not Dolls. Episode 206. Welcome to the show, guys. And welcome to the show, Jerry. Thank you so much for hopping on with us. Thank you so much. So as you can, as you guys can see, we have a very special guest tonight, the one and only Jerry Macaluso. You may know him from uh, Soda Toys, Pop Culture Shock. Uh, you know, you, you've got quite the long resume, sir. Or the the oh. Face Off TV show. <laughs> yeah. I know him because he used to be my boss. <laughs> how, how, how long was that? Uh, you, I mean, you sold the company, and then I pieced out to General Giant. I think we only like worked together for like a year. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, yeah, I know everybody pieced out to General Giant as they should have, um, but I couldn't remember how long we were we were together. Um, my memory gets foggy on that kind of timeline stuff, but a year, so that's good. Yeah, it was it was a good amount, and we had known each other for a little bit before that because we had met when I was still living in New York, and you were New York Toy Fair and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and Will was always pushing you on me. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All he right. Was smart. I mean, that was that was great. I mean, um, it's it's a shame that uh, I, I hadn't I didn't bring you on earlier. Ah. <laughs> Is this going to be all like, say, how much money did Adam pay Jerry to say sweet things about him? Well, you were, you were, you know, I'm a strong personality and you were the first person to push back because, because gener generally anything I said, everybody just kind of did and nobody pushed back. But um, Adam would, I mean, he, he pushed back on everything, even if he didn't, even if he agreed, he pushed back. Ch Chaney, and, Chaney and the Fallen Fed here know all about that. Right. Oh, absolutely. But we yeah. had great, great debates about like, because we had, Soda had a Marvel license at that time, even though nothing Marvel was ever released. Oh. Um, but so Adam and I had these, I mean, just these long, long debates, maybe you'd call them, on who we should be doing, what characters and this and that. And um, it was, um, it was, it was a lot of fun. Heck yeah. That's awesome. Me and Adam have long debates all the time too. Not yeah, really. About whether or not I'm allowed to say anything about nipples on the show. <laughs> well, uh, I, I think, uh, unfortunately we may be talking about nipples tonight. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Finally. Adam, Adam finally wins. Right. It's hard to, to talk about my my career without mentioning nipples yes yes indeed <laughs> so for um you know for the people out there who may you know may or may not be familiar with you can you uh give them a short little brief rundown of uh who you are and what you do sure um i'm jerry macaluso and uh i owned uh i was the founder of soda toys um back in 2000 and uh we did we did a lot of stuff, but most famously, we were known for Street Fighter, which even today, people still come up to me and compliment me on that, which is just amazing to me um, that something we did touched people that much. I just um, did earlier before, before we started. And, yes, <laughs> and, and then I went on to do uh, Pop Culture Shock Collectibles, which did statues, um, and I sold that in 2017. And um, before all of those, I did special effects in movies. And and that's basically what uh, what had jumped you into into toys. Am I correct? Yeah, um, it was um, it was uh, going broke. You know, there was no no work effects. At you know, had these periods. You know, these uh, feast or famine periods, and we were going through a, a, a famine period. And, and I should note that I was already a fan of, of at this time, McFarlane had already been out and, you know, I was hunting down variants and stuff at toy st stores. And, um, and um, I had two friends who were already sculpting toys. One was, uh, his name is Paul Siaka. Uh, he never really got into our world of collectibles. He was a premiums guy. Um, 
and then Sandy Calora, who many of you may have heard of, he made that short film, Batman Dead End. Um, but they were both sculpting toys and Sandy was actually working for Toy Biz already, uh, sculpting some stuff. And both of them were getting paid really well for sculpting toys, way better than if you broke it down to what, you know, I was being paid to do effects. And um, so I was, oh, and they got to work on cool stuff. Um, so I was just like, you know, um, I'm gonna see about getting into that. And uh, it happened really, really fast. Um, once, I, once I sent out packages with pictures and resumes and stuff. Nice. It was like back back then. I I think because like this is this is around the same time as like what like early McFarlane Art Asylum, like so, that kind of timeline. So, I did I did an interview a, a month ago or, or so, and then Ken Lilly. I don't. You probably all know who Ken Lilly is, but Palisades. Here, yeah, Ken Lilly was the creative director at Palisades Toys, and Ken. So Ken calls me up and he goes. Dude, your dates are all wrong. <laughs> so I was, I was like, all right, well, you tell me my life then. And so he proceeded to break down that everything I was saying was about a year earlier than it actually happened. <laughs> so, so, you know, you get to you hit 50 and, and, and I don't know, the dates just start to get fuzzy. But um, yeah, so, I mean, Spawn Series 1 came out in 94, right? Um, mm -hmm. and so I thought I started sculpting toys in 95, but Ken tells me I started in 90. <laughs> so um, that's what you got to go off of. <laughs> that's, that's what I have to go off of. Right. <laughs> you know, it's hard because, you know, the toy doesn't come out the moment you're done. Right. So I kind of have to work backwards and think, okay, so, you know, the first action figure I ever did was the Silver Surfer for Toy Biz. And um, it didn't, you know, I don't know how long it was between it, when it came out and when I sculpted it. So that's, I try to work backwards from that. I think that the, the Silver Surfer that you're talking about too is, it's not, it's, this is when Toy Biz was still doing the five inch figures um, with less articulation, but the Silver Surfer that you did, I think was actually a six inch figure because they, yeah. it was in the roundish bubble and it was a six inch figure and it had more articulation. Like it was like, I rem I, I just remember being a fan of that big, I didn't know that you sculpted it until years later, but I was a fan of that figure because it was a little bit bigger than the other ones and it had more articulation. Like I, I feel like it had ball jointed shoulders and a lot of the stuff had cuts. It had, it had ball joints um, and the shoulders. I don't think it had double elbows or double knees, though. Yeah, no, I think it was still, it, it was like, it was more articulated than a lot of the stuff that they were actually doing at the time. Like, it was new, it, but it wasn't, like, up to, like, Marvel Legends land, Spider-Man classics. Like, right, that, no, that I hadn't happened yet. I wouldn't have been able to, to pull that off back then. Um, um, but uh, I also did the Beta Ray Bill in that line. Um, right. And... Um, What's funny is they were both sculpted in Super Sculpey. Um, oh, wow. You know, yeah, nobody sculpts <laughs> toy action figures in Super Sculpey, but I, I didn't have uh, enough experience in wax, and um, I didn't know how else to, to do it. So, uh, yeah, Super Sculpey. And um, somebody gave me the articulation to put into it, and I can't remember who that was. Somebody else who sculpted toys for, for a living already was already doing that stuff. Later on, Digger helped me learn how to do articulation. Um, it yeah. was like like back during the, the like the traditional sculpting days. Um, that's like that is a lot of how the articulation was done. Is that like everyone would have like you'd have a, a ball joint, a, like a disc and a ball, and a, most of those those were done on like a lathe or something. Like it was right. like all done by hand. I mean, when I started at General Giant back in 2005, we were still like 50-50 traditional sculpting and digital sculpting. And what General Giant even used to do was would digitally model a ball joint 
and print out like a ton of different sizes. And then those would go to the traditional sculptors and they would just take a ball joint and work it into like, a, whether that's like a hinge joint um, or, or or like a ball shoulder, or you use two of them, my cat, what's up? What's up, dude? <laughs> um, <laughs> or the, just take two two of those disc joints and then two of the balls and you, you fuse them together, sculpt like a, a, a kneecap or a, uh, an elbow on it and it becomes a double jointed like elbow or knee. Like right. it was all done very, very much by hand for the longest time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and especially in the 90s, like pre-internet, like pre all that stuff being available on the internet, um, it was really tough to, to figure out how to do that. I remember, so before, before those two action figures, before Silver Surfer and yeah, you know, I've been looking and I can't find the damn picture of uh, the Silver Surfer. I, I'm uh, looking, I'm looking for it right now. Yeah. Isn't it the one I sent? Ernie's yes. on top yeah. of it. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm just saying I was trying to find one and uh, unsuccessfully. Um, Maybe if I turn my brightness down. Sorry, guys. <laughs> You're blinding us. <laughs> yeah. There we go. But no. um, before the Silver Surfer and the... Oh, there's Beta Ray Bill. Um, here's Beta Ray Bill. So there's a picture of uh, the super sculpy Beta Ray Bill. Um, and he only had swivels. And it's showing up, right? Um, we got... Yes. Okay. Um, no, I see Silver Surfer right now. Okay, yeah, no, the... the What is it? It's going all wonky on me here. Gee, I'm looking at the YouTube video. I'm looking at the live YouTube video. And it put us all in the middle. And yeah. to the right is a uh, I see Silver Surfer that I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. No, he's trying to bring up the um, the the uh, his Billy. his screen share. Correct. So it's not. This is what I've got up right now. So let's see if I can fix this. Uh, bear with us for our technical difficulties here. Um, Jerry, so keep talking about Better A Bill, but we're trying to get it up on screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he he was all all super sculpty. Um, I think I did him before Silver Surfer because he had less articulation. He only has swivels, um, and I thought, okay, that's easier because I had never done any articulation ever before. The only stuff I had sculpted before for toys before Silver Surfer and Beta Ray Bill was um, small premium stuff. Like uh, I did a line of figures for McDonald's premium giveaways for the Batman, uh, which is the Batman movie with uh, Arnold. Is that Returns? Uh, that no, I, is Batman Forever. Batman Robin. That's Batman and Robin. Returns is, is, is uh, the Penguin. Right. Okay. Returns, so Batman, yeah. Batman and Robin... So I sculpted Mr. Freeze and, and some other stuff for for that. And um, I did some Scooby-Doo and stuff like that. But <clears throat> the um, the first action figure was was uh, must have been Beta Ray Bill then, um, even before Palisades, which is funny because I think I misremembered the last time I was talking about this. And I said that Palisades, or not Palisades, I meant Resaurus. Um, that Resaurus came before Toy Biz, but in reality, Toy Biz came before Resaurus. I don't want to make this two hours of me no. trying to remember dates, though. That's a no, bad but that's one. that that's like Resaurus was another one where it was like that they they grabbed a whole bunch of licenses and made like I my the big thing that I remember about Resaurus is that they did um what's the Dragon's Lair. The video game, they did toys for Dragon Slayer. Yes. I would, like, and they looked great. They just weren't super, art I would love super articulated Dragon Slayer figures. Like, yeah, it, that video were... game was impossible, but it was the most beautiful video game ever. Like, I remember going to, like, the movie theater and, like, you'd watch people, like, playing it and dying right away. But the fact that it was, like, it looked like a cartoon, it was amazing. Oh, it was, it was dead on. Um, I, I don't, who sculpted those? You should know. Uh, the Resaurus guys, like, it, uh, 
the guys at Resource, I think, were a lot of the Plan B toys guys. Yeah, but but Jay and Chris don't sculpt, and Tony doesn't sculpt, and that's who pl- Plan B was. Plan B was, was. yeah. I honestly, so someone else did the sculptures, and I I just don't uh, I don't remember who it was because they're absolutely perfect. Like those sculptures were were mind blowingly perfect. Hey Jerry, I know this is totally out of our. This is out of the timeline right now. But one of the guys in chat said he still is rocking the soda toys now playing quarter scale Lord of Darkness in his display. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, that one. I remember <laughs> that one because I did. That was Jurassic some, Jesse. I did some molding and casting on that one, and then I think I might have worked on the packaging, and that was giant. That thing was massive. That was that was a nightmare. That was one of the things that put soda under. <laughs> <What's> that? <laughs> <laughs> it really, that's a whole story un- unto itself. So, did my beta ray bill ever show up? Yes, no? it's we've got yes. we've got it in a small image here up top. I'm I'm not familiar with uh, a lot of the screen share functions, unfortunately. So, okay. uh, bear with me while I kind of tweak. Uh, but tweak yes, it. people people can see it. They just yes. have to, like zoom in themselves yeah right. and, and guys i put the um uh the ones that i found i put them in our ig story all right do just so I, you guys can uh the chat migos can go and take a look at that as well do i have to let you know every time i want to switch out a picture or will it just kind of automatically you, you should be good now it's just going to be small like above you so try again Let's okay just to see how it goes all right, so now it brought us all back here. So the first ones were Silver Surfer and Beta Ray Bill. Yes, yes. And so, and um, real quick, just because I'm so excited to hear it, and okay, I saw so, other people too. What was the um, the Batman and the the Flintstones one? I mean, Scooby Doo that you were talking about were exclusive. There you go, Chaney. That's better. Yeah, yeah. This is much better. Here we go. There you go. Now we're talking. Now we're in business. Sorry about that. You know, I I, I can't remember what company they were for, but it was a company that did uh, premiums for, for fast food companies and giveaways and, and McDonald's wow. and all that. And they were, they were little, I mean, they were, you know, well, again, I'm going by memory, um, huh. but I'd say three, three inches tall, maybe. Um, but sculpting that Mr. Freeze costume, it was, um, it was the first time I used wax um because there was no way that i was going to be able to do something that small and super sculpy or anything like that so i had to learn wax and i had to learn it on the job um so mr freeze took me a little little longer than it should have because i was learning wax but um i found that i actually um liked it and what i realized after doing the first few projects toy projects was that i liked it better than doing effect stuff um I didn't have to get up at 3 a.m. to be on set at 5 a.m. And um, it paid pretty well. I got to just sit around and, and sculpt cool characters. So um, so my focus kind of more became the toy stuff than the effects stuff. Yeah, I love the uh, more more recently you or yeah, within the last, I guess, a few years ago now, you were posting like, uh, you know, some of the um, time lapse videos of you like sculpting some stuff. Real yeah. quick, real quick, Jerry, we got a generous uh, super chat uh, from Sacrifice Plastic who would like to say, just want to say thank you, Jerry, for the soda Street Fighter action figures and statues. Still some of my favorite figures and statues. Oh, that's nice. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. I, uh, I, I love that, you know, we can, I mean, we're not, you know, curing cancer here, but at least we can bring a little bit of enjoyment to people through toys. Um, every little bit counts. Heck yeah. Preach. So, yeah. so that led you on to starting then the toy line instead? Um, so from there, I, I started to put more of a focus on, on uh, um, <clears throat> toys and I sent, I sent packages Again, pre, I mean, we had the internet, we, we had email, but we didn't have like Google search or anything. Um, and people didn't have their contact info easily available online. So um, it was still mostly phone books. I managed to 
have someone send me a phone book from New York City from um, and I and I used that to try to figure out like uh, big toy companies. You know, wow. I didn't know where Hasbro and Mattel were, so I figured they were in New York City. I was wrong, but <laughs> they, since, since they all had offices there, I somehow managed to get. And back then, we didn't have the kind of I hate this term gatekeepers, but we didn't have that back then. You know, like you called up Hasbro's mm-hmm. office in New York City in Manhattan at that time. And they'd say, oh, here's the phone number to, you know, to California. And I'm um, uh, sorry, and to, to not California, Maryland. Okay. R- Rhode Island for Rhode Hasbro. Island. Mm-hmm. There you go. El One Segundo. Of the places I've never been to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, I have, but I forgot that. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, so people would, would give you info, you know, and people would happily, um, <clears throat> vendors like, good sculptors and designers and things like that were really hard to come by. And so if somebody thought you might be valuable, they passed you on, you know, nobody blocked you. They were like, Oh, okay, well maybe you're, you know, we've got stuff for you. Nice. Uh, And so it all kind of happened fast Um, from, from toy biz to resaurus. And then I did that, that alligator from McFarlane, which I found a picture of right here. Oh, nice. Sweet. <laughs> so this is what it looked like when I sculpted it before McFarland sculptors redid the whole thing. And I don't say that like in a snarky screw them. They made it way better. Okay. Uh, I, and that's like, that happens a lot. And it's like, it's a thing that, you know, people that, need to remember it. That, that looks awesome though. Yeah. So that's that's the real uh, the real deal, and that might be the first thing I sculpted in Castellane as well. No, 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 no. That Resaurus was before this, um, but um, yeah. So you know, McFarland, the in-house team, probably got this and laughed at it because it just did not have the kind of detail that McFarland wanted. Okay. Uh, I should say they they didn't send you like turnarounds or anything it was like like a page of rough todd sketches like it was not like a fully realized (laughs) idea and and so you know that's how i interpreted it and and um yeah so they they kept the head and that's it (laughs) everything else was was is completely different well the tail's a little so i think they kept the tail and just cast it in Castelline and redetailed it better. But the entire torso and, and weapons and stuff, now they threw all that. The head armor, I think, is completely different. They threw all that away. Oh, wow. I've got another one. Let me see. Um, none of this stuff's organized, so that's why uh, it takes a little bit of... Oh, no look. worries. I, so. I'm just... I, I... I'm just happy that we're able to kind of like view it this way. You know, this is, I mean, usually like you would get, we would be able to sit down with you and you'd be like, Oh, you know, it was this, if you remembered what it looked like, but you're actually able to show us, you know, images of what it was. So this is, this is awesome. Yeah. I, I, you know, um, I figured um, it's better to look at this than my face. So (laughs) I think we've got all of it. So one that like one of the things like, cause obviously a lot of these, a lot of people watching aren't familiar with like traditional sculpting methods and stuff. And like, it, and this is like a perfect example of like, you sculpted it in Castelline, but then you have a lot of like the, the, the model built kind of portions of it where it's like, what are you using? And it's like styrene, there's styrene tubes and stuff. Then you have like, is there a guitar string? It's like a lot of found objects. It looks like. All, you know, all like, of it was found. There's like a, a, a cap to a marker. You see that black, Oh, uh, there's like a sweet. a dark gray, uh, you know, uh, cannon looking thing, and it's a cap to a marker. But um, a lot of it's just styrene. Um, guitar strings were always popular um, back then. You know, we thought guitar strings looked cool or bass guitar strings because they were they were ribbed. Uh, yeah. But then there's there's a bunch of cast resin lathe pieces. And um, someone someone gave those to me, and I don't remember who. Um, 
someone just made a bunch of little lathe pieces for me to just stick in there because I was like, I need a bunch of little doodads. Um, it's so like one of the other things that I remember like all of us doing is you'd also, and like this, I it would probably get us in trouble years ago. It's not a big deal now, but like we would go to like hobby stores and buy model kits for robots or spaceships or aircraft carriers and like not you don't assemble the model kits you just pop apart the little pieces and you're putting doodads on stuff <laughs> wow. it was that's a lot they, of just that's how they made star wars so why not right yeah yeah, yeah Absolutely. I mean, coming, coming from the effects industry that was just normal to us was to repurpose other stuff constantly i mean like it's no, like that's the thing jerry it's normal to you and me but like i think a lot of the people that are like listening and watching they probably don't even realize this because like t i think so many people now know that like it's everything's digital so everyone's kind of doing that in the digital world but it's like back in the day like sculpting and doing this all by hand it was like trying to do it fast and efficiently and it's like yeah like a lot of it it's like hey that would look great glued on here and like yeah. <laughs> you're finding well, stuff in the kitchen or whatever. I, I'm looking at this, this alligator and you know, it's the first time I've looked at it forever and I see like washers and stuff stuck to the bottom of its tail. Um, it's probably too small for you guys to see, but, but like down on, under his tail um, there's, um, you know, those washers that have like the little spikes around the, the edges of it. They're yes. To grip. I can see it embedded in his tail. <laughs> yeah, so lots, lots of that. But yeah, coming from like movie sets, like that's that's kind of like the par for the course, right? You just grab whatever's around and you make it work. Yeah, completely normal. Um, yeah. where I come from. But but in the toy world, it's like whoa, whoa, whoa! We got to be all original over here. Yeah. Well, I mean now. Um, yeah. Back then, really, no. I mean, I don't think anyone would have had a anyone had a problem with uh, repurposing stuff back then. It, it just, it's just, uh, it's just different today uh, when it comes to that that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't remember what what we were talking about before I went on my tangent about this alligator, but uh, because next then was the alligator, and uh, they ended up just taking the head from it. So, and that was through McFarlane. And I um, never worked for McFarlane again. <laughs> uh, so after this, then where did that lead you? Like you were saying, you were finding just doing, making up the toys was easier. Yeah. Um, you know, by then, um, Resource had me super, super busy. Um, the first thing I sculpted for Resaurus, I just saw it when I was, okay, it's right here. Nope, that's not it. Hold on. You, I am interrupting you, and you might even be finding, pain, but you worked on some of the dinosaurs that Rosaurus did, right? Nope. No? Did not. All right. Whoops. Jeez, Adam. <laughs> come on, man. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is the first, the first figure I sculpted for Rosaurus, which is Cyber Enforcer from Duke Nukem. You can see Ken Lilly's sketch. Or Wait, I don't think that was Ken Lilly's sketch. I think that was the, one of the Borman sketches. Uh, in the bottom left corner there. Uh, wow. But so this figure, the Cyber Enforcer was in such a weird way, um, the genesis of my toy career um, or, or the genesis of, I don't know how to put it, but it, it led to most of my, my best relationships. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, everybody... Work, who ended up at Palisades worked on this. Jay Borman, Chris Borman, Tony Simone, uh, Ken Lilly. Um, but also, um, this was when I met Michael Norman. Um, so um, I, 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 a lot of your viewers may know who Michael Norman is, or, or I don't know. Did Michael continue that much in the toys after? I don't know. Um, but so... Um, he ended up being my shop manager at Soda before we started making our own toys. So when we were just sculpting for other people okay. um, and he and I sat and I think we spent two months 
on this figure together for the, I think it was $2,500 was to pay for, for this sculpture. And two of us worked for like full time for two months trying to figure out how to sculpt this thing because we never had sculpted anything with all this articulation. And I remember when I got the drawing from, from Resaurus, I thought, oh, wow, this will be fun to sculpt. And, and I, so I roughed it out and I sent it to them and they're like, yeah, but where's the articulation? <laughs> and, and I was like, you mean all that complicated articulation you, you want me to do? You're not going to like cut it in in China or something? Like, no, you have to do it. So that's when it became a really complicated project. And you can see um, the articulation is super primitive. Like for, for the knees, it's just like three Delrin circles um, put together. Um, yeah, this was, this was so tough. It was, it was basically trial by fire. Um, but um, it came out good, but it was never released, was it? I don't think it was. You guys are I, the toy experts. I don't remember seeing this. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. I'm I, not... think it was, I think it cost out too much. It was probably. <laughs> that looks that, like that to me looks like it would be super expensive today. Yeah, let me show you the back. It's Yeah, it's... that's that, I'm loving it the way it looks. And that's why I'm saying I don't think this was ever released. Yeah, I don't I don't recall it either. Chat Migos, does anybody like have this on hand or know about it as well? I know I don't have a copy. Um, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. And and I think this was Duke Nukem Series 2 because Series wow. 1 had already come out. Um, um, series 1 had Duke and then it had the uh, um, whatever those crazy round demon guys are. And, and it had the pig. Um, okay. And then series two was this, but it maybe the sales of series one hadn't come in by the time we were doing this. So when the sales came in, combined with how expensive this would be to make, it just kind of went away. But um, wow, that's even uh, got ankle articulation for back then. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean it, it, this thing was was crazy at that time for for me, considering all I had done was you know, uh, those, uh, the silver surfer and the beta ray bill. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's very impressive to move up from that to this. Like, you know, uh, <clears throat> like even there's, there's some figures now that don't have this kind of articulation to come <laughs> out. Like, well, you know, back then you, you had to sink or swim. There was no internet to go save you. There was, there was nothing to save you. And, you just have to figure it out. Now, granted, I don't think they wanted it to take as long as it did, but um, it got done and it was, it was cool. And, and it, oh, here's another picture. And it led to so much work from Resaurus that it was crazy. Um, we were, you know, it, it went from, hey, I'm going to dabble in, in toys to me hiring people to help with the toys within within 12 months from doing those those uh toy biz figures um within 12 months you know i had full-time sculptors going at, at soda wow so it, it went from zero to 100 really fast so jerry the only thing i found was an ad for it that it was supposed to come out in series three. Oh, three. okay see right and it looks I mean, it's exactly like what you're showing, only with painted color. Ah, okay. I mean, this is this is like s such cool stuff, man. And we did not paint them because at that time, first of all, I'm not a very good painter. So at that time, you that's know, not true. Well, I'm okay now, <laughs> but back then I was really bad. And um, what happened is, you know, nobody wanted to trust us with paint, so so we didn't get to paint any of them. Um, so it's just, just the sculpture, um, from, from my side. Oh, that's amazing, man. So how did this all lead into soda toys? Um, so I think part of it was, you know, money. I mean, you see, people... <laughs> that's the perfect answer. Right. Well, let's be honest. I mean, you know, 
you're sitting there and you're sculpting this figure and, and blah, blah, blah. And, and then it's being made by China. It's not being made by Resaurus. And, and you start thinking, well, I could do that. I'm, I'm already sculpting it. I'll hire somebody to paint it and then we'll send it to China and they'll make my figure just like they made Resaurus's figure. Right. Um, so there was that, which, which, Again, um, I'm going to sound like the, you know, the grumpy old man telling the kids to get off the lawn. But um, <laughs> back then, um, shoot, I lost my train of thought. Um, For the money. Um, I don't know. <laughs> for the credit collection. Yeah, for uh, the monies. Yeah. That once you've seen it and you had somebody that would paint it and then sculpt it and then you sent it off and now it's. Oh, Basically, oh, you were doing the same naivete thing. Naivete is where I was going. Is mm -hmm. is we were so ignorant and naive to how difficult this stuff was that we just thought we could do it. And now, you know, when I want to do something new, I'll go on Google and I'll look it up and I'll be like, oh fuck, oh, shit. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll be like, oh crap, this is way too complicated. I'm not going to get into this. But back then, you know, I I had only thought you know there might be ten steps to making a figure. And I had only thought of three of them, and I'm like, okay, I could handle that. And then the other seven steps don't show up on my doorstep until I'm already neck deep into it, and you just have to figure it out at that point. Yeah, you're um, already you're already in the deep end, so you got to try and swim. Yeah. So, so that's you know that's how getting into making our own figures started. Is is I just underestimated how difficult and expensive it was. Um, that and um especially when as a young artist you really hate people telling you what to do um and um you know as as an art director for as long as i've been you know it's it's funny how even today when i work with young artists they're always the most difficult um because they really think like they have these brilliant new ideas that no one has ever thought of and and blah 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 and I felt the same when I was in my 20s. And, and so I was like, well, you know what? I'll just make my own figures, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and so, so it didn't start with a business. Plan. It didn't start for a good reason. It started from, from youthful arrogance, basically. There's, there's been a lot of good businesses that have, mean, that have started that way. I mean, for instance, yeah. you were talking about, you know, McFarland. McFarland, that's, that's what he did too. Like, I don't want to work for Marvel. I don't want to work for DC. I'm going to start my own thing. Yeah, you know? it's very true. Um, and, and you're right. I mean, on a much grander scale, same, same basic story. Yeah. So I want, I, I want us to dig into some, some soda, like <laughs> I want Capcom stuff. I, Cause I want to talk. Yeah. Yes, yes, I want yes. to talk dark stalkers, which mm -hmm. is like, broken heart level stuff um and and you know like jerry you're you're gonna have to show off some some micronauts action oh, gosh, too they're, they're all they're all faded and covered in hair <laughs> um, jerry has a micronaut sleeve that's how uh, much he micronauts guys before we get to that i want to show some some other resource stuff Do it, yeah at least absolutely um, now Blake did put it in his book of unreleased toys, but you know, not everyone has maybe seen that. So that's the the just so everyone knows, that's Blake Wright. He did the the toys that time forgot. It was a Kickstarter, and they have there's a volume one and a volume two. I think volume two is still available. Volume one is like sold out. I've been begging Blake to re-release it because I'm dumb and I missed volume one. I do have wow. volume two, and he's you are all working on volume three right now. Yeah, I know. I'm gathering images for them, um, but I can't believe you missed volume one. I'm, I'm so very dumb. Battered. I don't know why. I was like, I honestly, I thought I backed the Kickstarter campaign, and then it turned out it didn't, and it sold out like really fast. I, yeah, I'm it's dumb. really, it's really good. Well, you have two, so you know, but it's really well done. Um, I'm flattered to be in 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 one and two, and I will be in three. Um, so uh, for Quake. Um, maybe this was series two, maybe it was series three. Don't, don't ever like do anything important based on my memory. Um, <laughs> so I was, I was resource hired, uh, to do, um, this character called, um, 
shoot, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, Sleeg? I think it's Sleeg, but it's from Quake. Um, and uh, this was the, the first rough out in Castelline. And what I liked about this, I was really excited about this one because um, I like the idea in the, in the turnarounds that he goes from this kind of hunched over footballish football player kind of pose, mm -hmm. but he had to stand up and be kind of big and regal and figuring out the, the right way to do that articulation to be able to get both poses exactly what angles to put the joints on and stuff. So I started to actually enjoy doing articulation instead of fighting against it. Like I, I had done previously, you know, before that, that last Duke Nukem figure, the cyber enforcer I showed, I really did not enjoy, like I didn't enjoy doing the articulation on silver surfer or beta ray bill. Um, I just wanted to sculpt something cool, but by the end of Duke Nukem, um, I was into it. And so this was the first figure where I actually went into the articulation in a positive mindset of, okay, let's see what we can do special with this articulation and also the neck. So like it's got this double jointed neck and, and a hinge jaw because when he does this full rise, um, the head has to do this. It's not really complicated compared to today's articulation. But back then, it was a complicated kind of double hinge to get the head where it needed to go. Um, okay. I, I found a bunch of pictures of him. Uh, let's find um, I, I, I see cool pictures. There's, <laughs> there's a great picture in the background. Yeah, I see cool picture. <laughs> so wait, you can see the background? No, they're just what in your sculpture. There was a picture of like, I think it was like Satanica or something like heavy metal. Oh, like, okay. like background of the sculpture, and there were some nipples. I'm just saying, like I saw. <laughs> oh. some Jerry, well, wait, we're wait, getting Jerry, we're... Jerry got scared for a second. And said, "You can see my screensaver." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a close up of the head. Wow. Um, you can see the little articulated jaw. Um, this was before we cut the double neck in. This was on the single hinge neck. Um, but uh, making an articulated jaw was fun because it, it kind of. And this sounds so stupid to people today because it's just so normal. But back then, our, you know, articulated jaws were, were kind of a newer newer thing. And it reminded me of doing effect stuff. Um, right. I yeah. liked that, that aspect of, of uh, anim animated that it did. So let's see. You pretty much did everything in yeah. gasoline, right? Like, did you, did you ever go to wax much or like... Uh -huh. Like Siobhan, I know you like for, for effects and mask stuff, you use Siobhan, but like toy stuff was primarily Castellin. Um, action, the, the bigger, the action figures were, were um, let me pull this one. Were, so action figures were Castellin, but at this time I was still doing, and we haven't talked about it because I don't think you or your viewers are interested, but because of those Batman premium figures I did, I was also neck deep and stuff like that, like little Scooby-Doo figures, little trolls and Smurfs, and those were all wax. They're like you know two inches tall, three inches tall. Those Dude, are you're all right, wax. You're, you're right. Like I'm I'm interrupting because it's like people don't know that it's like if you work in toys, that's the vast majority of the work that you do. Like it's like yeah. you know working a gentle giant. It's like everyone looks at like the sculptors and me and like we post toys about like Marvel Legends and stuff, and it's like. That's my favorite work. Like that's my favorite work that we do. But there's so much Pez dispensers, Happy Meal promotional things, like bottle topper, you know, like shampoo oh, yeah. bottles or drink. Like it's like th that's the actual like work that where you make money. Yeah, that's where right? you, that's that's what pays the bills. Dollars an inch. Mm. Yeah. I, so for your viewers, in case they didn't know, so back then. Um, the rule of thumb was a thousand dollars an inch when you sculpted toys. Oh wow! Um, and so that's really good money. Like, yeah, no matter who you are, that's like even today, that's not bad money. Um, and this was thirty years, twenty five years ago. So yeah, I mean, the bread and butter was you know were scoop three inch tall Scooby Doo's that you could do in three days, 
So you're making a thousand dollars a day back then. And, wow. and that was, that's more than a thousand dollars a day today. Right. So yeah. we were like, we were, we were all doing very, very well um, at that time. Wow. Um, here's the uh, last picture of, uh, I put him up. In the last one from this little group of, see, the, the problem is all my folders are unorganized. So I'm just kind of going through them one by by one. So this that, that's, is. That's fine. We're completely enjoying it. I'm, I'm, I'm enthralled right now. <laughs> and, and I'm sure the listeners are too, like, like I, I see all the comments of how cool and they're asking questions about this. I mean, because everybody who's listening is either as old as us or as young have started out their own stuff too. So are getting inspired by your story. Adam's done that all the time throughout the show. And here we have Jerry. I mean, you're considered a legend and our creators in the chat, our artists, our collectors, like this is such a cool, you never hear about what you get to do collecting like what's really put into it. And then all of a sudden we had Adam and we get little aspects all the time, which is so great that I love Adam, but here you are able to show these off. Like, I'm so glad that you have these pictures because a lot of people too don't, they, they don't, you know, they lost it or they got rid of it mm -hmm. so that you're able to share this with us. This is, this is so awesome. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's funny. Adam probably makes more action figures in a year now than I have in my entire career. <laughs> I, it is, I, it is crazy compared to him. They still don't pay as well as the like <laughs> premiums and everything else though. Like that's it. I wish they did. That would be so much nicer. I think so. I've seen these gauntlets on a Batman before. I'm just saying <laughs> recently, you may want to check the copyright on that, Jerry. That's funny. Um, so this is, um, shoot, I can't remember his name, but he was from the Magic the Gathering line that Resource was doing. Um, and again, he didn't come out either. I, I have so many figures that never came out. Um, That's so awesome. I actually have the molds and the prototypes oh, of, God. of uh, that Cyber Enforcer, which was the very first thing I sculpted uh for resource and i'm pretty sure i have them for him as well that was um, one thing that i actually did want to ask you like so for a lot of your stuff like do you still own a lot of prototypes and everything um in theory i do there are boxes that haven't been opened in 20 plus years <laughs> but they're still in oh, your possession yes now what's in there i i don't know for sure like but when the last time i moved i did see the actual casting of the cyber enforcer resin casting. And I saw the resin casting of the dog soldiers prototype from soda toys. And I saw the resin casting of, uh, these are all two ups. And I saw the resin casting of the tyrant from resident evil from Palisades. Oh man. Um, so, <laughs> right? so the fact that there was this very stuff in this one box tells me that there's probably a lot of other good stuff in other boxes, but you know, every year I tell people like people ask me about them, Hey, find them and take pictures. And every year I say, I'm going to do it this year. And you know, it's, it's <laughs> been three years since I sold the 40, almost four years since I sold the company. And I still haven't found the time to go through those boxes. <laughs> uh, we got to knowing they're there is comforting to me and I don't need to see them. Yeah. No, they're there. Um, but the other thing is, um, so as we were moving my stuff out of the company, I discovered that I had crates and crates and crates of old silicone molds from soda. Oh, so, wow. and, and I looked through them a little bit and I saw stuff going back, to the nineties before soda toys into what I was just prototyping. So there's all sorts of stuff there. I just have to work up the, the motivation to go through it. I, I feel gotcha. like I thought I saw you post a picture of like those silicone molds and it's like, do you know how much like DNA you probably have in there of like me Renee, Will, like, it's like, you know, just like, and I'm talking like, not even like, oh, it's just because we worked on it. It's like, no, no, because we like 
sliced open our hands and bled all over sweat. that stuff. Yeah, little drops of blood and yeah, lots we, of sweat pouring off our brows. We oh, got a very God. generous super chat from Smash Lab. He said, Jerry, can I come over to your house since Adam will not let me? <laughs> Say uh, no. You know, if 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 the stuff wasn't in, in buried in a storage unit, then yeah, because then it would be easy to access, and I would love for someone else to go through it. Um, <laughs> but since it's all buried in a storage unit, I just I just have to one day get that that motivation up to go through it. Yeah, I've heard a story from uh, another um, another person on a show, uh, another podcast on the ACBA podcast. He said he had uh, hounded you before about getting some King of the Hill prototypes or prototypes for figures that hadn't been made. <laughs> yeah. So were uh, uh, were my were the King of the Hill figures not made? All of them, or were they? I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm not exactly too familiar with with. Um, I think there was what one wave put out or maybe two. Hmm. I don't remember. I, 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 I know, I know we sculpt, we prototyped all the main characters in the fence that spelled out King of the Hill. I just don't, uh, I don't remember if everything got released or not. It's, it's so hard to, I don't know about you guys. It's so hard for me to have a clear memory of that. Well, stuff. Like, like, I mean, that's totally fair. Cause like I've talked about this before too, where it's like, there's so many projects that you work on and like mm. you already touched on it where it's like we work on something and like it usually like what I always tell people is that uh, the, the start to finish of a toy is like having a kid. It's like making a baby. So it's like from the start point to like when it gets on shelves is going to be at least at least nine months most of the time, um, you know. It can be shorter, can be longer for sure. But like, that's the general kind of idea is like making toys, like making a baby. So by the time, and it's like a lot of the stuff that we're making for Mattel or Hasbro or whatever, it's a year or so later. So it's like, it surprises me when it comes out because God help me. I've worked on so many other things in the meanwhile that like, it's hard to keep track. And then that, my point being that so much stuff does also fall through the cracks where it's like it gets made by us but then never actually produced right, right? for whatever reason mm -hmm. so there's so many projects like that yeah no ab absolutely i'm uh and and then I, I, on a similar topic um every so often i see something online and i'm like oh i made that <laughs> and i had totally forgotten it ever existed like the other the other week, um, I'm 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 helping somebody with some Tomb Raider stuff right now, and and uh, I was doing research on Tomb Raider, right? And I remember I made Tomb Raider action figures. I'm not going to forget that, but right. I had completely forgot I did Tomb Raider statues. So <laughs> I'm looking for Tomb Raider stuff, and I'm like. Those are oh, I made those. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I was like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot about that. And back then, that was it's, it's just, just me. Oh, okay. <laughs> you guys. That, That's his. Uh... That's his uh, beverage or bathroom break uh, signs that he uses. That's yeah, very responsible. Yes, yes. I I, I feel you, Jerry, because uh, Adam said it right because. I get you. You forget about what you created. Like I have so many kids. I see one pop up in the hallway and I'm like, who are you? Oh yeah. You are my kid. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sure like you're searching through stuff and you see it and then, and then it hits your memory of, wow, I did that. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and, and it happens at least a couple times, times a year. Um, and it, it never ceases to to amaze me that I I forget one of those kids, but but I do. Yeah, uh, right. You know, yeah, recently I think uh, Retro Blasting had posted a photo of uh, one of the old Soda Tomb Raider statues, and and he's he's a big big Tomb Raider fan, and he was just juiced to get it. He found it. He, it was one of the ones that he he couldn't uh, locate for a while, and he was able to find it for a decent price. The, so those Tomb Raider statues, um, sculpturally, even today, they're still pretty good. But the paint, oh, yeah. the paint on the production versions, was was 
was not good. Um, I mean, it wasn't awful, but but it just it was too toy like for a high end higher end statue. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, um, but I, so when I looked at them the other day, I remembered the you know she's got this jacket on from the movie Angelina Jolie, and she's got the tiger on the back, and I remember figuring all that out like um because what we did and i think this was before oh this was yeah this was before adam um <laughs> I, I mean like honestly like i know i i sorry i'm interrupting after i just went to go refill my <laughs> my alcoholic beverage but uh i i remember going to like i think it was one of my first comic cons and going to the soda booth and buying the exclusive Lara Croft Tomb Raider action figure from you guys. And it was, I think that was one of the first times I actually met you. She, you, it was, you, in the, in the, in the movie, she wears like a gray wetsuit and that was the main release figure. But I think it was a black wetsuit for the Comic-Con exclusive. Yeah. And like, yeah, I, I loved that. But it was she looked really good in the black wetsuit. Um, but yeah. yeah, so we did the black web suit as, and what did we, I think we made 300 of them and I think they sold out like almost immediately. And that was the first soda toy San Diego comic con where we sold stuff. And, um, we did like $80,000 in cash, Oh wow! Um, <laughs> which, which for a little company back then, um, not knowing if we were going to sell anything, walking away three days later, because this was before it was a five day show, um, walking away three days later with 80. It's weird how my memory remembers some things like it was. Three <laughs> days well, well that's 80, kind of an important yeah. thing. Like it's like it's gotten crazier. <laughs> since yeah, so eight, I remember it was the first time in my life I had to use a hotel safe like the safe in your hotel room. Cause before that I was like, who the hell needs a safe in their hotel room? Why are you, why are you bringing stuff that you need a safe for? Like leave it home. And I suddenly realized, well, this is why people need a safe in their hotel room because sometimes you walk out of the comic con with $80,000 in cash. Dang. I just always put my Reese's peanut butter cups in mine. <laughs> just so I can be cool. So here is, um, We'll move on after this. So, so here is a pic of the painted Sleeg, unreleased Sleeg from the Quake line for Resaurus. Um, and we, I don't believe Resaurus paid us for this. I believe I had this done to show them that we could paint. Um, uh -oh. um, and I, I do, and we did start to get, they started to let us paint stuff around that time then. Um, but, but, yeah, it took, took a little bit. I'm always, it's always difficult for me to take on a job that I can't personally go in and, and, and finish or, or quote unquote save if something goes sideways. Um, and I, at that time, especially, I didn't paint at all. Um, and, and so, you know, I was leery on taking paint work. Um, and I, I can't remember who I hired that that was doing the paintwork, I think it was Vince Adoni um, who went on to be one of the primary people at um, Stronghold Toys, which most people won't remember, but they did do some cool stuff. Like they did the style, and, and I sculpted almost all of it, if not all of it. Um, but they did a stylized like 12 inch Joey Ramon and they did a okay. Um, mm. Stronghold did Stronghold did a bunch of cool stuff that was kind of out of the box. And um, but Vince was he went on to Stronghold, but he was my painter, I believe, at soda early soda before you know in the late 90s who, who did this this stuff for me. Um, yeah, this looks killer. We tell our, uh, you know, we tell uh, our chat amigos all the time too. Like, you know, you can have the most killer sculpt out there, but unless you got a, a good paint uh, applications to back it up, like it, it, you know, paint can ruin a beautiful sculpt in a second. Yeah, and and a good painter 
can excuse me save a really bad sculpture exactly um in some ways i ended up learning that paint was more important than sculpture um which was an ego blow to me since i couldn't paint um but it is kind of true um so here's a picture of that uh um guy from magic the gathering painted and again this was not what he was going to look like he's actually if i remember correctly he's white oh. um, but we we had this painted up um as our display piece and i'm pretty sure i saw it in my box that i mentioned um over here on the left you could see a little um peekaboo of uh the way i used to draw out diagrams for making my sculpture armatures okay and you could see this is this is um um yeah i don't know who that is um and then here's some reference photos in the corner of of a, a guy who's in shape because none of us were in shape <laughs> <laughs> so we, we would find people to take reference photos of because there wasn't a single person at soda who who could just you know we could take a photo a reference photo of yeah, bring, bring that chiseled guy over here <laughs> um i remember I was in um, shape for like a second i think <laughs> i Sounds remember funny. sending sending people out to the local gold gym like <laughs> trying to find like bodybuilders who will come in for reference you just thought i just i just need a guy to come in here we take a couple shots of him and then it's all good there's hey, there's nothing creepy about yeah, asking I was just, a muscly person to be like, yeah. no, no, we want to use you for toy reference. Yeah, yeah, I can toy. only imagine trying to sell that. Like, <laughs> I think that'd be pretty easy in a gym, though. I mean, isn't can that I, what they want? You know, can can you come down here and uh, we're gonna take some pictures of you? Don't worry, it's for toys. It's for toys. It's all for toys. What kind of toys? Well, you know, we, we we're we kind of can't talk about it right now. Um, <laughs> there were those types of toys. Yes, yes. That reminds me of, um, I don't remember who I was, who was interviewing me. I was being interviewed for, for maybe it was the, I think it was the local news or something on, on the, the, Je the porn star figures, the Jetta figures and, and all adult superstars. And somebody said, um, what does your family think about you making a living in pornography? And I was like, I make toys. Yeah. I like, you know they're pornographic toys, but I guess I never considered myself making pornography. I just was making toys. But it was such a weird question, I thought. You know, my toys are based on the, the adult film, film industry. I don't actually make adult films. I just make toys based on those films. Yeah, it was it, just just weird. So, <laughs> where do you want where do you want to go from there? Because I've been all over the place. Um, let's see. So we we've walked through kind of like the 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 beginnings a little bit of of soda here, right? With the uh, yeah, um, the the Duke and the Magic and whatnot. So I guess let's let's just take it to. So what was what 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 were the steps that got it got you into Street Fighter and Capcom? Basically, licensed toys. Like when yeah. did you guys decide to start doing in, in Tomb Raider toys? and stuff like that? So, yeah. So I mentioned uh, Vince earlier about Vince was the guy who was painting and went on to Stronghold. So Vince Vince was really the guy who was pushing me <clears throat> for us to to make our own stuff. And, and, you know, um, at first I was, sorry, my dog's trying to get in the door. She's, she's freaked out because I'm usually asleep at one thirty in the morning. Um, and so she's like, are you okay? But I <laughs> well, well, if you, if you know, in here. send help. Yeah. If you need to let her in, go let her in. Cause mine, no, he's laying she'll, here. She'll just be, she's a hundred. Oh, okay. She'll just be like all up in our face. Mine's laying um, here next to me snoring right now. <laughs> um, so Vince really wanted to make stuff. And Vince was a huge fan of planet of the apes. And I'm a fan of planet of the apes as well. But Vince okay. was like a, a mega, mega fan. And he had, he had all of those. I don't know if you guys remember, but there were these really nice Medicom Planet of the Apes figures 
uh, in the late nineties. And, uh, you know, they were very, very, um, you know, counter action figure pose. They only had a few swivels, but they, they were sculpted really nice. Um, so we, we were doing stuff. I don't remember what we were doing, but we were doing stuff with Fox, uh, as a sculptor, um, and uh, Vince, Vince would go to Fox to get sculpting approvals. And he became friendly um, with uh, Juanita, who Juanita Palamo, Palamona, something like that. But she was um, in charge of approvals at Fox for, or licensing at Fox for collectibles. Okay. And he, he basically had me go in and we, tell, we asked her if we could do Planet of the Apes mini busts. So that was going to be the first Soda Toys project. And uh, there are pictures, I think. Sweet. Um, this is awesome. This is so yeah, awesome. <laughs> and so, so, you know, Vince is a good salesman, and he basically got Fox to give us the license for nothing. It was just a royalty. There was no advance, no guarantee. It was just the royal straight up royalty it was probably a higher than normal royalty um i remember those you mm -hmm. notice well maybe you can't read it because it's small on the screen but it says soda sculpture and design it doesn't say soda toys oh uh, okay um, and soda toys hadn't been thought of yet and so we did these mini busts and i'm pretty sure i sculpted all of them um for sure, I know I sculpted Cornelius um, because I was so proud of that likeness because mm -hmm. it's all in the eyes for Roddy McDowell. And, and I, but I'm pretty sure I did the other two as well, but I could be wrong. Um, and so um, Juanita gave us this license to do Planet of the Apes mini busts. I thought the prototypes came out really cool and it became the first time we had to deal with a factory directly um and boy did they screw it up oh, um no. you know i don't even remember what factory it was it was it was like it was a referral from someone else and and i didn't nobody went out there to check on them um i just thought like okay, you send your stuff to the factory and they send it back and it's cool, right? Right, general idea. Like, hey, did you just send it to a Chinese factory. It's all good. They, they send your product back the way you want it. It's all money, right? Exactly. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, there was probably some samples sent back and forth, but, but there was really no real effort put into making sure the QC was good and that they, these look good. Mm -hmm. And so they arrived and they were horrible. Oh, uh, no. They were really, really bad. And um, so that was, um, that was the, uh, the beginning of that, of, of making stuff. Uh, and, and I believe um, we, we also didn't do pre-orders. Like I didn't have contacts at Diamond or any, at that time, Diamond was still, you know, the 800 pound gorilla in distributing collectible toys. Right. And I right. didn't have contacts at diamond at that time. Um, so, you know, we got them in and then we tried to sell them and there was no Amazon. There was, there's, there was no big bad toy store. Or, or, there was, yeah. There you know, wasn't even in like, you know, you couldn't even put it on social media or right. you couldn't even, you know, it was, it was pretty much word of mouth. Like you might've yeah. been able to get into, you know, wizard or toy fair. Or I was something. just going to say that wasn't this ad a page in toy fair. Exactly. That's, yes. that's what we ended yes. up doing. Um, was, was doing a page in, in toy fair. Um, and God rest their souls. I miss toy fair magazine so much. Yes. That was fun. Wasn't it? It was yes. the jam, man. Oh, it, the good days. Yeah. Here come the old men yelling at the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's it's funny because I'm I'm literally the youngest one here, and I'm just like, oh man, Toy Fair was so, so my jam. I loved Toy Fair, man. That's was, how I knew right when you put up that picture. Price. I'm like, oh, that's Toy Fair. I re upped my subscription to Toy Fair magazine like as they were going bank as Wizard was going bankrupt. Uh, so, like, I sent the money that I never saw again to like get more issues of it, and it's like, oh, so bummed. Yeah. 
those those were those were good times. There was something about um, the anticipation of of yeah. having to wait for a magazine to get this new information. Correct, uh, like you said, there was no social media when yeah. we looked at those coming soon's. That's all we had, or like your ad pages, either if it was that or the Street Fighter stuff. Like, oh my God, there's round two figures, and then like it was. That, well, was that was our that was our feed. Well, that was the new yeah, that was the news for the month, man. That yeah. was like you know, yeah. you might get a little something in like a lease or you know, something like I'm that. Previews. Yeah, yeah, previews. I would I would take it in with me into Suncoast. No, look, you should have it. Yeah. It, it says release date <laughs> September. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was fun. So as I was looking at that image, I realized it said 2002 on it. And, and I was thinking, how could that be that late? Because I remember doing those before 2000. Um, and I realized that I started Plastic Fantasy doing Jenna Jameson <clears throat> before we did that Planet of the Apes. Okay. That Planet, that Planet of the Apes was... Um, concurrent with with jenna so what it was is <clears throat> 99 was was when it was probably late 99 was when we we decide we meaning me and, and vince prodding me to make stuff on our own and the jenna thing i think happened first <clears throat> and then while i was doing the jenna thing vince came up with the planet of the apes idea so they kind of ran simultaneously but so the toys hadn't been thought of yet um, sorry, I'm just I'm I'm using um, you guys as a crutch to to figure out my life. No, no, like, no problem. <laughs> it's like we're going through a time machine. I, I think I think I, another I, question that would be you know uh, that would you know probably would like to be uh, people would like to know is like how how did the whole Jenna thing like uh, work out? Like how did it like hey we're gonna make <laughs> Jenna Jameson figures? Like how did that like, come to Chaney's, play? Cheney's like yeah, so uh, do. Do you know Jenna Jameson? Well, all right. Like to put it out to put it out she here. Was like the first one. The, yeah. No. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. This man has lived the life of a rock star, and he's made toys. Like it's so amazing. Um. Um. So the Jenna, the Jenna, the genesis of the Jenna goes goes, <laughs> goes back a long way. So it goes back to like ninety one, ninety two, and at that time, I was a starving young effects artist that shared a house with five other effects artists. Mm -hmm. And what we would do to try to cover our mortgage, not mortgage, we didn't own it. Our rent was a, see, as we get old, we start saying mortgage. <laughs> uh, uh, what we tried to do to cover our rent was um, rent the house out. Cause it was, a, it was an okay house and it had a pool in the back was rent the house out to porn production. <laughs> On the weekend. Nice. And they would pay us, if I remember correctly, two hundred dollars a day. Like our rent for the entire house was seven hundred bucks, maybe a month. Mm -hmm. And so, in a couple weekends, we can cover our rent, and none right. of us have to pay any rent. Wow. Yeah. So on, on the weekends, we rent. And this is something you could do at that time in LA. I mean, it was very location specific. It's not like you know, some dude in, in Iowa is like, what a great idea. I'm going to yeah. do that. That's not going to work. Yeah, you, you had so, to be at SoCal at the time. Right. And it had to be in the early 90s. Right, um, right. And and so that's how we started to, uh, how I started to meet all these people in the porn industry as, you know, on a Saturday morning, I'd wake up and I'd walk out my room and there would be a porn star sitting on my couch. That's how I met Ron Jeremy for the first time. Um, <laughs> my quick Ron Jeremy story is so I walk out, he's sitting on the couch, he's naked. Can I tell this story on this channel? <laughs> yes. Go for it. <laughs> You're alleged. This goes into your whole background. I mean, yeah, so you're not. He's naked. He's sitting on the couch and he's keeping himself excited for the next scene. Okay. And, and I'm like, holy shit, it's Ron Jeremy. <laughs> and he steps and he stands up and he goes, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going to do the wave. I'm going to do the yeah. thumbs up like, from way over here. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Yeah. I'm like 20, 22 or 23 years old. I'm like, yeah, no. Um, but he was, he was funny and we hung out a little bit. Um, but that's how, and then I started, so I started to date girls who were in porn because I was around them all the time. Right. And through, through that, um, I met um, the, one of the very famous porn producer directors of the 90s. His name is Jim Malibu. That's not his real name, but that's his stage name. And mm -hmm. um, Google, I mean, he's made so many. And, and he and I became super good friends. And he introduced me to Jenna and, and Jenna's husband at the time, Jay. And Jay and I hit it off as well. And um, so we were kind of all, all there's just a group of friends, right? Um, and this was, Jenna was famous in porn, but she hadn't quite become like the world famous Jenna Jameson. She didn't have her E show yet. She didn't, mm -hmm. she hadn't broke out of porn. She was famous because she was on Stern all the time. Okay. Um, right. And, and so, you know, as, as we were, I was neck deep in developing toys and I wanted to make my first action figure you know, I, I knew I didn't have the money or any way. I mean, I couldn't go to a movie studio and get a license. They're not going to give it to me. Right. Um, so I was like, what, what's an out of the box way to do this it was always percolating in my mind. It's not like, like I had some great strategic, you know, <laughs> path laid out. It was just something in the back of my mind to always think about. And one day it just occurred to me that the perfect action figure is my friend right who's like right here and we have dinner every so often um and so sat down with her and jay and i pitched it and they were like sure let's do it and um i showed them a bunch of i don't know about a bunch but i showed them at least one claiborne moore figure because right um at that time and even today I mean, Clay's female figure work is beautiful. Now it's stylized; it's not realistic, right. but it is gorgeous. And and I was a big, big fan of Clay Clay's sculpting. And I said, I want to do it like this, and and she was cool with it. Now what we did kind of sucked. Um, it was I didn't want to copy Clay, so I wanted to just use Clay as a jumping off point in terms of stylization. And I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know that I'd be able to find any Jenna pictures easily here. <laughs> um, I, well, I think Google is our. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, um, the point was, um, I, I really botched it. So I sculpted it. And, and uh, I was really proud of it at the time. I thought, okay, it's stylized, but it doesn't look like a copy of Clay's work. Um, but in reality, and, and I don't think, my memory is that no one told me it sucked. And I think that's one of those bad things sometimes about being the boss is people don't want to tell you your shit sucks, your stuff sucks. Mm -hmm. um, and and it did it did suck. And no one, I don't think, told me. Or if they did, I dismissed it because I was young and arrogant. Um, anyway, it, it really wasn't good. Jenna wasn't happy, but she really didn't say she wasn't happy. Um, and so that first figure came out and, um, you know, it, it sold like crazy. But just because <laughs> it was Jenna, not because it right. was good. And yeah. I got really lucky. That it was that, the name behind the figure, correct? Yeah. I got lucky that that happened because if the figure had sold based on its quality, and by quality, like the actual production was fine, but the prototype, just the design of it wasn't, from my point, wasn't, wasn't good. Okay. But that could have been a failure. And if Jenna had failed, there never would have been a soda toys. It just wouldn't have happened because the money wouldn't have been there. Right, right. But because we were, we were literally selling containers of Jenna figures to adult distributors around the world. Like we had, we had places in Russia 
in Dubai that would call on the phone because remember this is yeah there was internet but it wasn't like as widely used I mean there right. was email but it wasn't as widely used we'd get phone calls from like broken English in Russia you know and and we want container Jenna and and, <laughs> and we'd like you know run off 12,000 figures and and just ship them to to Russia in whatever color they wanted and it was it it was crazy. Um, there was so many different variations of her too. Yes, that first one there was actually it was just there was just the regular and no 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 I'm wrong. There was regular black and glow in the dark. I forgot about uh -huh. glow in the dark till you said that. <laughs> Ernie's all I know three. I know. <laughs> but, but for the official ones, I'm pretty sure like some some adult distributors like the guy in Russia, uh, oh in Germany, the guy in Germany would buy. I can't tell you how many containers we shipped to Germany, um, but they would want different colors all the time. Okay. Give us a batch with our costume in red. Give us, oh, you know, wow. and, and yeah, it was, it was That's crazy. And what was crazy is that. Cause I want to interrupt you. Cause I want to explain to some people that may not know, <laughs> but the, pla the plastic fantasy, the, the, the porn star figures, the whole, the, like the gimmick with them was the room. They had clothing but it was removable clothing so it was um i think it was craton right so it's like i'll it's be a, right back it's like a it's a, it's like a soft uh silicone stretchy kind of material that the the fabric like clothing wasn't fabric it was sculpted but it was a stretchy pliable material like uh, craton uh, tell me if i'm wrong so that was the later job yeah, That's this it. is a, a you, you got into exclusives and everything. But oh yeah, later on, I mean, it was like no holds barred. Like we had no shame. Later on, it was just like, can what can we do? Okay, we'll put Tower Records logo on her, and then Tower will buy ten thousand pieces. Correct, um, and this is exactly what Adam's talking about. Is the material was and that's it. So was you stretchy. Sell them, you could sell them in stores where it's like, hey, it it's a figure of a porn star but their clothes are removable. So mm -hmm. you get it home and you take it off and it is 100% anatomically correct underneath those clothes. Right. Right. Yeah. No, the, the, the clothes coming off and them being anatomically correct was the, was the gimmick. And without that, I don't think they ever would have sold, but I can't imagine how anyone would have ever, you know, greenlit this project and not made them anatomic. Like, who would have ever thought that someone would buy a porn doll that wasn't anatomically correct? Oh yeah, no, I think like it, it and it and that to, to speak of like you know because like I I'm gonna throw this out there and just say this was a this was a genius idea whether it was intended or not overall like this was a great idea and and not only did you have this cool idea of like, like having porn stars with Anthem. removable clothing but it was a good seller. You, you did it and like this was what like you know you had soda toys but these were you you had kind of a secret company doing this because this was plastic fantasy so right. even though it was soda toys you kept separated so that way you could you know you wouldn't you wouldn't get pigeonholed maybe uh, like i you can explain this better than i can but you kind of kept it a little bit separate than soda toys as far as that, how i remember yeah i mean my my thinking was oh the halloween one that's my favorite i think with the pumpkin base <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm hitting all jerry's good spots <laughs> uh, yeah my thinking at the time was um if 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 I don't separate it, there's no way I'm ever going to get like legitimate licenses. Right. Um, right. Just it'll so, no, you'll get you'll get blacklisted from like normal licenses, plain and simple. No yeah. Disney for you. Yeah. Right. right. So yeah, it had to be separate. Um, As everybody in the industry, you got to take on stuff that's going to fund you to get you where you want to be, and this was your big one in order to get there. Right. And but I will say at the same time. Um, once we got past that first Jetta figure, which was awful, um, I, I made it a point like to put, <clears throat> I was like, okay, if we're gonna do this porn star stuff, we've got to make it so good that people can't just dismiss it as 
cashing in on porn stars. So then we became, and correct me if I'm wrong, because Adam's going to know this. Um, we became, I believe, the first company to do full body scans directly into action figures. I, you, it, it was, it was very <laughs> much at the same time, as far as I, what I remember, as when Jax was also kind of doing that with WWF. Had they, they, so they had already started doing the full body. They had just started. You know like, they had done the heads. It was, mm-hmm. it was very, very similar time period. Um, I, I, I want to interject with one other thing too, because I, I remember the same Comic Con that I went and I bought that Tomb Raider exclusive toy. You, you had the plastic fantasy stuff, and it was like that. That's like a part of it. Like it was a, the Soda Toys booth also had plastic fantasy booth, but the plastic fantasy booth was much like Spencer's Gifts or like, you know, the adult yes. video store where it was cur- it was a curtained off section. So you were at Comic-Con and there's the Soda Toys booth and there's a curtained off section, guys. Like, I just love this because it's like, I don't know how many people experience this. And like I did. And it was like, this is the craziest stuff to me. Like, <laughs> it was the red door the section toys. of the video of the Here's video store behind the curtain, and it's like those are the porn star toys. <laughs> it was the line to get into cool. that curtain to look through that curtain was huge. Oh, and I bet, I it, bet. It, it, yeah. So, if my memory is correct, we had all the all the clothes <laughs> ones on display, and then we had built this box or something with a curtain and lights inside of it. And we had the nude ones in there and you had to wait in line. <laughs> and, and in hindsight, <laughs> it's crazy to think that because now I would think it's too embarrassing. People aren't going to wait in line and be seen waiting in line to peek at nudie figures at San Diego Comic-Con. Oh but again, yeah, they are. Oh yeah, I no, you'd so, be surprised. You'd I be surprised. I so naive back then that it never occurred to me that it might, it might not work. Um, and um, actually, you know what? This just jogged the memory, and this may be a real memory or a false memory. But <laughs> I om- I want to say that the very first, so on setup day, we didn't have the box, and we had new ones on display, and um, <laughs> Comic Con Jared or the the, the the head honcho at Comic Con. Um, he actually was on the floor back then and um um he came over and said sean which what is it sean i think that's who i knew i don't remember okay but but he came over and said guys you you can't show me (laughs) when you show up (laughs) and so overnight i believe jed haig who you you replaced right no, uh, we we work together. Like, you, okay, and I, when I say replace, I don't say that. In the, I love Jed. I, I don't. Yeah, no, no, no. I know, but Jed was Jed actually stayed even longer because I left for General Giant, and Jed stayed there for when like Renee and Beardy were like in at Soda for like. Okay. A long time. So I believe Jed stayed up all night. He he was an amazing troop. Like like that guy. Like he was always like on top of everything. Um. I believe he stayed up all night and built this booth to look oh, at the wow. beauty figures in. Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing See, them at like Spencer's and like, you know, they were obviously the in in box uh clothed versions, but it was just like even then like looking at like the design and like the you know, the way it was all set up, like obviously knowing who the who the the you know the people were and whatnot or the women were. It was it was cool, but it was even like from a figure standpoint, it was like they looked nice as figures, even though you know what I mean. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Like, so we were spending. I mean, three D scanning at that time was super expensive. Yeah, because it was the new thing. Yeah, we were spending probably six or seven thousand dollars on scanning each girl, and that was before we we, you know, and that included the print. They would they the same company Cyber Effects at that time would print them. And but then we had to mold them and put them in castellane and put the articulation in and do all the rest. So we were we were spending a lot of money on these prototypes. We were spending like the kind of money that Toy Biz was spending to develop a prototype on these porn prototypes. But you guys and, were making way more, huh? <laughs> yeah. 
And, yeah. um, you know, we were thankful in, or fortunate in that these figures had a $20 SRP when most figures had a less than $10 SRP. Right. And so even though they were costing us a lot, um, cause I think we were paying about two fifty or three bucks a figure back then. And that, that was a lot back then. Um, we were making a lot of profit because even wholesale, we were still making six, seven bucks a figure. Wow. Um, which, you know, when you're selling containers to Russia starts to add up really quickly. And, and if it wasn't for that cash flow, soda toys would, would have never come into existence. So that was the very long answer to your question. Before, before <laughs> That's you get awesome. into the soda toys, Street Fighter stuff that Faney wants to hear about so bad, <laughs> I just wanted to say that like one of my favorite things about working at Soda was that like, you know, we would have all this product around and we used to take the porn star clothes and put them on every other figure. Like that was like, like so many thongs and panties and they're stretchy, fully sculpted versions and their little mini skirts and their tube tops and stuff. And putting those on like Street Fighter figures or Spider-Man classics or anything else. Like I like loved that. And it was like, I wish we had taken pictures of all that stuff. Cause like, that was so much fun. I love that new collectors get to hear these stories as far as this is where everything came from. Cause it's so amazing and awesome. Like, like that, like, yeah, it was at comic con and it was the biggest seller compared to what nowadays would be like at a Hasbro booth or something. Mm -hmm. right. it, it's the best. And then, yeah, it would be at um, Spencer's Suncoast tower records well, and those were the closed ones. Well, it's hilarious because when in the early 2000s, um, I was in a band and we had a, a show at the Whiskey A Go-Go. And if you know down in Hollywood, Whiskey A Go-Go is right across the street from the Hustler store. So we walked across the street and we we're looking around in there. And I just remember there was just like on top of where, you know, the videos would be. There's just a line of all those figures yeah. just lined up, ready to go. We had a big, uh, a big, uh, um, what do you call it? A big media event premiere there uh, with all the, the news stations. It was crazy. It was the first time I was ever involved in anything like that. I remember, um, you know, pulling up and, and there were news trucks outside and, and <laughs> hundreds of people gathered around to see, uh, to see Jenna debut her action figure. And I thought that like, I didn't, I didn't know that I was going to be pulled in to it. Like, I thought I was going to be a, you know, I was going to be able to watch it, but like, then they, they wanted to interview me and, and, and they pulled me in, Oh, take pictures with Jenna and, and all this red carpet stuff. And it was, it was so weird. And, and, and that, um, not to take this on a weird tangent, but mm -hmm kind of started I want I don't I don't want to say a dark part of my life but I had never been a partier I had never been one to go out and go to clubs or 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 I had never even tasted alcohol at this time oh wow uh, whoa I was I was about as square as you could be I was just all about making stuff and um I kind of got caught up in this whole like you know Industry. Hey, I'm, a cool, I'm a cool guy now. Yeah, the, the, ho the Hollywood me. glitch and glamour cool world. Guy. Yeah, and, and I kind of went off the rails a little bit there. Not quite. This was only the very. That was only the taste of it. But by like 2005 ish, you know, I was like, you know, at the day I during the day I was of course at Soda Toys, um, you know, doing doing what we do. And every single night, seven days a week, I was out. Like every <laughs> single night, um, I was dating a new porn star every month. It was it was crazy, and it makes for good memories, I guess. But <laughs> in hindsight, it's also embarrassing. <laughs> but but yeah, like I said, this is you know this is the part is like this man makes toys and he has lived the life of a rock star. Correct. It it was just a weird uh, confluence of of offense like it was it was and i wasn't i i was always chubby but i wasn't fat 
Um, but yeah, it was just it was just weird. So, I, but I wanted to say something to Adam because he was talking about putting putting clothes on on figures. Um, I, have you ever seen a ship run as not tightly as Soda? Like it was pretty much a free for all. Like just do what you do. You guys are all good at what you do. You don't need me to to harp on you. The only time I think I ever really came into the back uh, other than to compliment was if if there was some deadline looming and John Schuweiler was on my back. So I had a partner. Um, his name was John Schuweiler and um, he ran the business. Um, I ran the creative. He ran the business. I mean, there's obviously some, you know, intermingling there. Um, but the truth is I didn't, I didn't want to know about the business. It, I find business so completely disinteresting. I hate business. Um, well, you're an artist. <laughs> so he would come to me and be like, Hey, you know, we're going to need those prototypes shipping to the factory next week. And I'd be like, Oh, okay. I'll go see how they are. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes they were ready to go. And sometimes, you know, it was like, no, not even close. Um, you, you had to crack the whip so, a little bit, but you know, I mean, at that time, the team at soda were like, it was like, it, it, it was like the all-star team of, of toy artists. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. it was truly, and I don't, and I don't even say that like from an emotional point, like I'm trying to say it from a lot, like the, the talent that was there at that time and what they all went on to do and stuff. Um, it, it was just an incredibly talented group of people. And, um, you know, uh, with Will, and then once Adam came on board, then there was some structure. Because before that, there was no one really in the back. And I call it the back because it literally was the back of the building. Um, there was no one back there who was focused on making sure stuff got done on time. It was, it was, there's an interview with me about Micronauts where um, I said, yeah, I mean, they'll be done when they're done. I mean, and that's kind of how <laughs> that's kind of how soda ran, which is part was part of the problem. Is you know, um, someone like me does need someone like John Schuweiler, who who is the partner at Soda, uh, to keep them on track. Because um, as some of the delays at PCS will will tell it, show you, I am that guy who who I'll just keep working on it on, until I think it's right, even if it's missing a important financial deadline um so i always am, am best when i have someone who is a little more structured behind me to support me i, I like to call it putting the aces in the places you said you had all the all the all the right team there you know when you got the aces in the places you know nothing like there's nothing that can stop you you know when you got all the the aces in the places, it just everything works out. No matter, like you said, like we want to do it right. We want to do it this way. If you got the aces in the places, anything's possible, man. Yeah. Well, the, the thing was, you know, it, it's a wonderful feeling when as, as a business owner, former business owner and, and manager art director, um, it's a wonderful feeling to know that everyone there. It, okay, maybe it's not done on time, but when it is done, it's going to be right. Right. And, and that's nothing ever. There was never a prototype that came out of Soda that wasn't right. I mean, those Soda was a, was a monster back then. I mean, we were, we were arguably better than anybody in the business for a, a couple, two or three year period. Well, um, there's, there's a legacy left behind that people still talk about and their fans are to this day. So I, I would, 100% agree with that statement. Yeah. And I, and I tried to recapture it with, with PCS, but it, it never quite gelled the same way. And, and, and that's when I realized how special soda soda really was, was when I wow. couldn't recreate that, that team. Not that I didn't have talented people at PCS. I had lots of super talented people at PCS, but they're, they're just, it didn't gel the same way. Right. Right, exactly. Now I know you said you were um, you were conscious on time here, um, 
just want to check with you on time and see how you are on time. You are, before- you are East Coast. And like, honestly, like we have a whole nother show to do with you if you <laughs> come back. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'm I I I can go a little bit longer if you want. I mean, we didn't even get to soda really. I know. No, no, <laughs> see some of it. Yeah, another show. I mean, if I'm rambling too much. You've got to kind of rein me in because uh, I do that. No, no, this, no, no. This is like I said. This is the amazing part of in this time that we're in right now, Jerry. There's so many new collectors. There's so many like this. Um, you know, me and Cheney have been doing this since we were kids. Literally, that's how we met, and and like that. I mean, you're talking about your whole industry uh, of those toys a- embarrassing part of that is when you and your dad are at tower records and you go down to the mall with the family and you're both walking up with the jenna jameson figure like <laughs> what That's oh funny. my bad <laughs> and so Jerry, like uh, people don't know where this came from and and what goes on like where adam came from i mean there's still people who jump on the show that don't un- understand what adam does so when you bring this to light for everybody these are the shows that are going to last forever and go on and be repeated. And like, no, like, dude, I heard like, this is where our figures came from. That's the great part of it mm-hmm. with you having the pictures and everything like that. Like go for it. Show us some, show us some street fighter Capcom stuff or anything. Cause now we have the whole backstory of how we got there, which is awesome. Gary, well, you've already said so many nice things about me and you <laughs> haven't even gotten to soda yet. Right. Well, you, you, I mean, you know, I, I always genuinely liked you because if I didn't, there is absolutely no way I would have put up with your obstinance. <laughs> well, he, he probably uh, wouldn't. That's the same with these guys. Too. <laughs> that, that's why we love Adam. I mean, yep. You know, I always, I always, um, sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll get annoyed a little bit when I see the word um, or see someone call them, refer as humble because I'm like, if you're really good, you don't have to be cocky and arrogant, but you don't have to be humble either. Right. And 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 like you know, Adam, um, he knew his stuff, and I respected his opinion. So I took his his input, even if it came across a little douchey at times. I took it. <laughs> I took it very seriously. See, I told you, Cheney, someday somebody would tell him. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, but the truth is, I can I can be that. He knows just as well. I can be that way, too. <laughs> right. um, when you're the boss, you sometimes misuse that power. And I'm sure, I know, I don't recall specific instances, but I know there were times when I was just like, no, I'm done. I'm the boss. This is how we're doing it. Stop. Um, which so, is not a good way to, to make a decision. But Sometimes you have to. You know, but he, see you know, Adam I, someday somebody would tell Cheney. He, 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 you know, now it sounds like we were having a relationship, but he made me better. You know, <laughs> wow, that's awesome. And there, oh, that's the thing great. is, and the reason I bring it up so many times is because there was no one else at the company, even though there were super talented people there. Like, I mean, Will Harbottle, one of the best sculptors who's ever worked in collectibles, Cat, one of the best painters, if not the best painter who's ever worked in collectibles. They, they were all full time at soda and, and, but nobody pushed back on me. Like he did, you know, like Alexi or someone may, may, Hey, don't you think we should do it this way? And I, and you know, sometimes when you have so much stuff, you're the boss and you have so much stuff going on, you, you, you have this default response of no, um, just to kind of weed out information because you mm-hmm. figure and this is probably all working subconsciously, but you figure if it's important, they'll push back again. Right. So mm-hmm. your default is is no, no, that's fine. And everybody, almost everybody will be like, okay, all right. But not him. He, <laughs> he would like, he would follow me back to my office. <laughs> and he knows it's true. Like he would follow me all the way back until my, not that it was a big building, but he would follow me all the way back and not let up until I closed the door in his face. <laughs> <laughs> so i think it, what me it, and, was, it was a wonderful time i think what me and adam were uh were hinting around at here is uh if you would if if you would um if you would like to well, would you like to put a pin in this and maybe have a, a second episode where we focus on the this the 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 rest of the story it'll be after after thanksgiving right yeah so like it'll be early december Jerry Macaluso, Toy Amigos Part Two. Are you you gonna be around? 
What's your schedule? Yeah, I mean, you know what? The only reservation I have is this this midnight thing, uh, but there's no way around it. Um, well, we can we could try and go earlier to you know maybe like eleven or ten your time, if that I works. Mean, okay. Every every half hour is probably a little easier for me. Um, if we schedule it in and then we can get it out to the chat Migos and let everybody know one special episode after mm -hmm. hearing this Cheney, I'm sure everybody would be down the and so excited to hear part two. Yeah. The next episode, I like we right. have to dive into to the Capcom stuff and the unreleased stuff, man, because can like, we get it? Can we get a tease Jerry uh, of yeah, like exactly what you would be showing? I mean, um, and whatever you're I'm up to looking now. for Jenna stuff. So, so now I, uh, what is that? <laughs> I know you, I know you showed us something earlier. Uh, Guys. Yeah. See the chat Migos are saying yes, definitely. And Chaney, if we could schedule that in, I, I'm you know, down, I have really, definitely. I have really great pictures of these unproduced prototypes from street fighter series whatever it was going i don't remember what number we were on oh like DJ, wow. um, you know, that's, that's, Janie that's, just passed out uh, uh, that's a, uh, like, honestly there's uh, so many that like people <clears throat> haven't even there's some that people wow. haven't seen, i don't think right there's oh, a lot honestly jerry i don't know if you know but cheney you're literally missing how many a couple uh yeah a few a few and then um you know, if if you would be if you would be so gracious as to um, you know, or if I would be so gracious or to have you back for you know a, a part two of this, we can get into you know things like clear employee variants and uh, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I like I said, I'm I'm fine with it. Um, um, Look at that, DJ. Yeah, if if for some reason you can't do it a little earlier, that a Friday would be better because I could sleep in on Saturday. Okay. Um, I don't know if you move the dates or if it's always a Thursday. I don't. I don't know exactly how it works. It's usually um, a Thursday, but I can bump it up to what would be probably like uh, ten your time instead of starting at midnight. Yeah, ten my time would be great because I, I would then not have to. I took a nap today Let's because do I was up at at seven a.m. my time for work, and and by seven p.m. I was like, "There's no way I'm going to make it." So, so I and then you got to work again tomorrow, not right? Not that people care if I took a nap or not, but <laughs> chat, chat Migos are flipping out because, yes, these are. I mean, how old are these figures? And, and this is five. This like, is that, this is oh. from, that DJ figure is is probably 2005, right there. Well, what's probably, yeah. What uh, I wanted to say too is like what's so crazy is like the stuff that you guys were doing back then with Soda Toys, Street Fighter is like what right. companies have just now started to do like getting you know uh extra head you know with the different um mm -hmm. expression extra hands like good articulation and pain apps like you guys were way way ahead of what anyone was doing yeah i mean i'd like to i'd like to say that um it was it was some genius business model but the truth was is it was so competitive. It's such a competitive industry with everyone doing such wonderful stuff that you, my attitude was we just have to like kind of throw, uh, throw budget out the window and just whatever it took to, to make these as good as we could make them, we had to do to be competitive because, you know, there's only so much money to go around and, and we had to, we had to try to grab, the dollars that someone might have been spending on Marvel Legend or McFarlane or something like that, and so you know, Street Fighter is 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 as big as it is is not Marvel and it's not you know stuff Todd was doing, and so the only way for it to work was it to be as good if not better than what was going on there, and and again, you know, I I was so fortunate that i mean all, the entire soda team but in particular when it comes to street fighter will and cat um you know i i haven't talked to them in since the last time we were at san diego and hung out for a few minutes um but you know will will got it like i mean first of all he's a better sculptor than i ever was or would will be but 
he just understood the aesthetic that I saw in my head so perfectly that he required almost no art direction, like wow. the barest minimum. Every so often, I would say something like, can we make the shoulders a little bit wider apart? But it was always a little minor note, like Will like just had this intuitive brilliance and, and, and I didn't, and Kat's paints are so, I didn't even know people could paint that good until I met her. Like that, it just blew me away. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you guys want to call it quits now, then, then we can, and I'll go back to bed. Yeah, no, I, I, <laughs> I don't want to keep you up too late. And plus, like, you know, Adam has said, so there's more to talk about. There, there's a whole other show. And if you don't mind coming back on and hanging out with us for another show, we can adjust the time. That's not a problem. You know, um, I, I would love to be able to go in depth with, you know, all of this stuff instead there's of trying to rush it through. It. Want to cover for yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have a social life these days. So I like talking about this stuff when if especially you know it's flattering that people are still interested in in it, it, it very you know um, very interested before we go though i do want to point out that i sculpted this morbius mask it still needs hair but i love oh. i've always loved morbius and with the movie and everything um I, I i think the movie looks good but but i just felt i had to like get my morbius done i love um, it Something yeah, I meant to ask you what you had back there because mm -hmm. I was very curious. Yeah. Now that mask looks awesome. I've been watching you all over social media over the past couple Jeez. months. Nice. You've been posting progress on that mask. It looks great. Thanks. So, um, yeah, I've had a bunch of people email me about copies, but the thing is, it won't really fit because the mouth goes so deep. I don't think you can't get ahead in there it wasn't meant to be an actual mask mm -hmm. but um i still have to do the hair but i think once it has hair it'll look pretty cool yeah it's we awesome. got a we got a, a comment here from the very talented craig warwick he said he's not just interested jerry your work is literally life-changing to many of us and in so many ways that is very very kind and honestly you know as you get older it's comments like that that keep you going that you like feel like okay I, I, I matter in, in some way. So that's, that's very appreciated. And, and Craig Warwick is one of the, uh, one of the top, uh, you know, custom figure makers out there. The guy is insanely talented as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's, it, it, you've influenced so many people. You I, if you get a chance, when you go back and rewatch this, you'll see all the comments. Uh, our chat Migos is what we call everybody who listens in and, and makes a comment is just praising you very high right now. And I think you'd really enjoy going back and reading everything everybody has to say. Oh, for sure. I will. I, I need the ego boost these days. Uh, <laughs> I, wish Craig, I wish Craig Warwick would say nice things about me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, Thank you. I, will, uh, I will try to organize this folder a little bit too in the meantime so that it's a little easier to find okay. what we're looking for because hmm. it's uh, a mess. Okay, well, thank you so much for sitting down with us and thank you even more for agreeing to do uh, part two. I, I had no no idea that it would go this far, so uh, I'm very anxious and you know excited to talk more about the next part, part two. Um, but more so, thank you for taking the time out to sit with us tonight and, and just talk toys and stuff, man. Talk about your career. Yeah, thank you. And that is the kindest way that anyone has ever said you ramble that I've, I've ever heard. <laughs> no, it was I, uh, great. I, Jerry, I, I appreciate you sitting down with us because, like, honestly, like, you know, one of the big things these days ever since you, you, you you moved to to Las Vegas and now now you're on the East Coast, but I only ever get to see you these days at Comic Con usually. And yeah. with the pandemic and no Comic Con this year, I you know it, it, we're 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 Zoom hanging out. So it's yeah. true. I only hope that there is a Comic Con this coming year because I don't want to do two years without it. Um, Adam, Adam, we want to be at that dinner table. I don't care if I have to just pass you guys bread. In the corner, <laughs> the diamond diamond party and and also the gentle giant. Party. 
No, yeah, no. we should, you know, you should gather fodder and 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 it, it would be nice to to have a little little hangout. I'm down. Send Vodder my love, by the way. Oh, Vodder Vodder is uh he's more than welcome over here anytime too. I love that man. He's a he's a Toy Migo somewhat regular as well. Yes, he's, yes. Yeah, I, I, I love him too. He he uh <clears throat> you know what? We're not gonna get any more stories. Okay. <laughs> All right, next one. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, exactly. Next time. So with that being said, yes. I'm your friendly neighborhood playing with myself. I'm the fallen fat. I'm Cheney 180. And I'm Jerry from Soda. Or people used to think my last name was Soda, so I'm <laughs> Jerry Soda. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, guys, they're not dolls.